everybody. Welcome to What's Up for Your Children. And we're going to um, start in the same place that we always start, which is in the heart. So um, let's just give ourselves the opportunity to breathe into that heart space, inhaling in through the heart, and exhaling out 360 degrees from the heart. And let's do it again, breathing all that energy into the heart. There we go, now it's moving and exhaling it out 360 degrees from the heart. And this time as we bring all that energy into the heart, we're gonna exhale it out to the children in our homes, the children within ourselves, the children that we know. There we go. Let's do that one more time. It's like where the energy is, um, there's a lot of compression in the energy today, tonight. There's a lot of uh, energy moving in the collective right now. So let's take that nice deep inhale again into the heart space, exhaling it out 360 degrees to, to those children within you, those children that are in your households, those children that you know and love and are interested in supporting. And then let's go ahead and breathe into the heart space again. And this time we're gonna exhale that energy back out to really all of the children everywhere, all of the children that are on this planet, all of, this all of the children that have come to bring something new, all of the children that are a kind of the hope of what is available in the next iteration of our own evolution. Okay, and one more here inhaling into the heart space again, and just exhaling back out to your own inner children, to those children that lie within you. There we go. There we go, all right. A little bit more settled in the energetic field now. And when you're ready, we'll just breathe our eyes back open. Here we go. All right, Miss Sharon, what do you have for me today? It's from Gloria and she says, hi, I work for a city library and refused to wear a mask. They started disciplinary action for insubordination. The universe has totally been there for me, but my central nervous system is um, quite taxed. They are still after me, even though I am on sick leave. May I please have info about my future? I am brave and strong, but feel like I'm being, being strongly attacked. Blessings. Yeah, yeah. So this mask issue um, is, is a big one for everybody involved, right? And it's big for a number of reasons. Anytime that you start um, stripping, you know, the, whether it be the inner children or the external children of their, of their, of their power, of their voice, of their sense of safety, there are all kinds of energies that are going to come and rise up within us, right? And so more so than um, 
than giving you, Gloria, uh, specific about the future. Um, what I really want to present here is an opportunity to be completely present with what's coming up, with completely present with the energy and the feelings that are coming up because that is going to dictate the future, right? So if we have, we, we have fear coming up, um, I know I had a conversation with my grandson just the other day about wearing a mask and his ideas about masks and and how he feels about that and what it does to him when he's wearing one. I know what it does in my own to my own inner community when I'm asked to do that as well. So whatever's whatever's coming up, um, I'll give you an example. When I was when we were first in lockdown and I was you know, this was the mandate in California. My inner 15 year old was furious. My inner, that inner 15 year old was the one that was going to say, you're not making me wear a mask. You're not doing this. You're da, 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 da. So again, what does that inner 15 year old need? That inner 15 year old needs to be heard. She needs to be valued. She knows she needs to know that her opinion is matters, right? And so it's unlikely that we're gonna get somebody externally, especially if they are maybe within a workplace or within um, that have certain mandates that they're trying to follow as well. It's very unlikely that we're going to get them to to be present to these parts of ourselves that are uncomfortable. So we have to do that for ourselves. And as we do it for ourselves, as we actually let that fear or anger or concern or any of that rise to the surface and we meet it with as much love and compassion and acceptance as we can, what you'll notice is that the outer landscape starts to shift the outer landscape starts to shift to match the internal experience. So now more than ever, we are really not able to control the external world, right? We never really have been, but what we wanna do is we want to kind of, I'm gonna say support, nurture and up level these different inner children or these inner aspects of ourselves that feel the way they feel for very good reason. And as we address them, then watch things start to soften externally. That said, I just wanna add one more piece to this because as we're in the second run of lockdowns right now, right? Um, when our inner children feel supported and loved and nurtured and appreciated for the experiences that they're having, they have a tendency to, um, to help empower us, right? So there also are gonna be those moments where that inner warrior, that little 15 year old that's gonna say, you know, no to whatever, um, is arising just because they're in that stage of their own development. That same inner warrior is the one that's going to say externally, no, thank you, not doing this, you know, keep it up, go ahead. And this is still not my choice. It's my sovereign right to choose. And this is not what I choose. So, and we're all coming to a place in our experience now where this external voice is gonna be required. And that comes along much stronger when our inner children, our inner voice is supported and nurtured. Yeah, is that helpful? Yeah, good, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right, next question. It says, my grandson, Michael Jr., two, two years, three months, no words yet, no, or only repetitive babble, da 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 da. He is on the he's on the spectrum. Will he speak? How can I best support long distance? Mm, yeah, great. Thank you for that question. 
So um, give me his first name again, Sharon. Michael Jr. Michael Jr. Okay, so um, let me just get him here for a second. So yeah, so first what I wanna say is, again, especially for some of these younger ones that are here now, there is all kinds of energy, there's all kinds of energy fluctuating back and forth regarding, and so there's a bit of, you can imagine there's a bit of confusion, you know, if there's confusion for us, there's a lot of confusion for some of the kids, especially when they're younger ones and they're just new here. So a lot of children that are diagnosed on the spectrum, they do definitely take a little bit longer to find their form of communication. Sometimes that's verbal communication. Sometimes that is some kind of spelled communication um, or sometimes they have other ways of um, coming up with their own languages that will be their language for a while. But what I will say is right now, part of what he is experiencing is just kind of like the chaos of that energy. And so, so what matters, what doesn't matter, what, what goes into a word that makes sense, what doesn't go into a word that makes sense. Um, especially right now, a lot of people are having all kinds of feelings, right? So mom and dad are having all kinds of feelings people in their in his environment are having kind all kinds of feelings and they are saying things like i'm happy when they're sad they're saying things like everything's just hunky dory when things are confusing and a little unnerving and so when the word and the feeling don't go together it makes it very challenging for these kids to um, want to attempt to verbally communicate anyway. And so that's a little bit of what's going on here. As far as your question about what to do to support that, there definitely is, um, in his case specifically, there's a need for a bit of buffering, I'll say, between his highly sensitive system and what is collectively going on right now. And so we can do that really simply by, you know, kind of creating a sphere of light around him. We can do that very simply by going into, sending energy into the center of his heart and having, and, and broadcasting that out either for him or having, um, him do that with us. That kind of energetic boundary sometimes for the kids is just enough to um, create a little bit of a separation between themselves and kind of the chaos of that world. And when they're a little bit calmer within their own space, they can kind of start hearing their own words. They can start to hear their own requests, they can start to choose um, in ways that are internal first and then will become external over time. So that's a, that's a, mm, there are a few other things going on here, but that's a, this is a great place to, this is a great place to start um, as far as his energetics and really helping to solidify the energetic world, his internal energetic world. I hope that's helpful. Okay, next question. Uh, it says Cole's uh, circadian rhythm is significantly pushed to staying up late and getting up late. Also a lot of fatigue. Mm -hmm. I'm providing him support to guide him to provide himself the sleep he needs a good 10 hours and also other other assists to help his energy level, but still a lot of fatigue and speaking with other folks, children and adults, including myself, it seems overall fatigue is pervasive. Any thoughts and suggestions? Yeah, that's um, me too. <laughs> yeah, me too. So um 
a lot of this has to do with when we hear people talk about um you know the fact that we are transforming and that we're evolving as a collective humanity right now it's literal i mean we are being broken down and restructured biologically psychologically neurologically and for energetically sensitive kids they feel that all the more for all of us in our own energetic sensitivity we're feeling that as well and so so when we consider the fact that literally literally everything that was everything that is no longer in support of coal everything biological neurological psychological is all getting dismantled and reoriented or rewired it's kind of like there are moments of it when it's kind of like having surgery and you would not want to not be anesthetized <laughs> while you are having surgery and so the way of integrating all that's going on and also kind of not being fully conscious which we don't need to be for all that is transforming is to go to sleep so sleep is the best integrator that there is and i would highly recommend to all of the parents and and all of us as well i mean we really need to take this into consideration we need to sleep when we need to sleep yeah and we'll find that if we do sleep when we need to sleep, we're going to be um, so much more capable of dealing with the energetic shifts that are taking place when we're conscious. So yeah, thanks for, thanks for uh, giving him permission to get that full 10 hours, if not a little bit more when he needs it. So yeah, thanks. Okay, two questions. Uh, the, these are both from Jordan and it says, Yowza, yes, heavy moving energy today. And can you talk about getting to sleep? When my str strategies are stripped away, I can't calmly settle. He mm -hmm. thinks, let's see, he thinks this may be helpful for others. So I think yeah, it's yeah. Is better given work we did last week. Yeah, yeah, great. So um, yeah, so first things first, um, the last few days, I would say we were just talking about this on the journey back to love call that we were on we we're the last I would say the last end of last week. Um, there's such a build of energy right now. I mean, most people in the world, not just in the United States, but most people in the world are going back into some kind of lockdown at this stage there is stress there's anxiety there's hostility there's fear there's all kinds of energy that's kind of coming to the surface and it's it can be a little confusing and a little bit disorienting to say the least so you know we're really i mean that that tender loving care i can't stress it enough it's like loving ourselves enough to find those things and it's unique to each one of us that just bring a little bit of joy just bring a little bit of light sometimes it's just sitting outside and watching the birds fly you know sometimes it's taking a walk what whatever it is um it really needs to be uh implemented right now and it is unique for each one of us so asking ourselves that question and sometimes especially for energetically sensitive kids right now sometimes that is a little bit of distraction modality playing that game that they like to play or or um you know watching the video that they like to watch or those kinds of things and let's not beat ourselves up as parents and or as uh highly energetically sensitive children as we kind of go into some of those strategies, because quite honestly, we just need them right now. It's, um, we just need them right now. Um, so Jordan, you also asked about sleep. So one of the things that I wanna say, especially, especially for energetically sensitive individuals and especially the kids that are really um, kind of different plane of consciousness sensitive 
when you start to go to sleep, right? You have, especially right now, um, and I know what Jordan, we talked about in our last time together, but what I will say in this moment is that there's so much energy moving through that each one of us has a level of adrenaline running through our bodies, which is coming from, um, it might be coming up from the unconscious and or it may be conscious to us. But I know I'm noticing in my own experience that you know, without a without a few uh, episodes of the crown or something that's going to really dull me out for a while, I can't slow down and shut down, right? So again, no judgment. We're finding what works, right, and what slows that system down. So what we want to be aware of first is that we all have a certain degree of adrenaline running through us and part of the reason that that adrenaline is running through is the collective is on fight flight freeze the collective is on high alert and so anybody who's energetically sensitive to that is going to have a heck of a time turning that off right a heck of a time um shutting that down so there's a couple things um, and I, it's interesting because I've had a lot of people lately asking me about like things like melatonin and actual physical taking something doesn't do it because it, in some cases, especially for highly sensitive kids, it actually creates the, the, the opposite. So we're wanting to address this from the inside out. So we're wanting to do things like Again, find our breath. And the reason we're asking to find our breath is because the breath will reconnect us with the body, right? As we reconnect with the body, it's almost like our system, right? If you're in fight, flight, or freeze, you're not breathing. You've stopped breathing. And this is how some of our imprinting happens in the first place. So in this case, the moment that we're kind of going, okay, I'm ready to settle down for sleep. I'm ready to, um, to shift into that other brainwave state, right? We're going to want to start doing that well before we are actually lying in the bed, right? So just a few minutes sometimes, breathing into our heart space, exhaling back out. Again, it's not the be all and end all for everything here. But what it does do is it reconnects us to the physical body. And as it reconnects us to the physical body, we start moving that fight, flight, freeze energy out and away from us, right? So we kind of create a little bit of a space so that we can actually settle in, right? For those who are really sensitive, Jordan, <laughs> um, also, um, the, the methods that you use to actually, I'm gonna say, ground yourself out. And in this case, I'm gonna say grounding yourself out in a, uh, I wanna say in a natural way, right? Maybe it is, um, maybe it's hugging, right? Maybe it's hugging mom. Maybe it's feet in the grass, right? Maybe it's connection to the earth in some way that's physical. Not so much um, technology right before bed. Again, the technology can act as a distraction, which in the right times, not so bad, but right before bed, probably not such a great idea because again, we're wanting to disconnect from that, those energetic stimuli that kind of can place people in fight, flight, freeze. And sometimes even that electrical current, even that, um, even that kind of energy can kind of put our bodies on some kind of alert. So first into the heart, first, you know, exhaling out, breathing into the body, finding your way of grounding that is not 
connected to um, electronics, right? At least right before bed. Not easy all the time, but moms, grandmas, anybody that's there to hold you and hug you and kind of squeeze you for a second to really get you into the experience of that body right as you're going to sleep could really help. So, yeah. Thank you. There were several questions addressing different parts of that. So that sounded good. Um, next question is, have you experienced other kids, folks diagnosed on the spectrum, spectrum who do not feel the cold temperature weather as typically others do? Cold does not feel, feel cold in our Northwest winters. He needs very strong encouragement <laughs> to wear long pants, sweaters, coat. Any thoughts? I want, uh, I want, of course, for his body to be taken care of and be healthy. Right. So if, if we're not in our bodies fully, we're not registering the information that the bodies provide. So, um, so different uh, children on the spectrum are connected to their physicality to different degrees and no pun intended. So, um, but when they are connected to different degrees within their physical body, they are feeling their bodily sensations to different degrees. So a lot of times we will find that, um, you know, there are a lot of kids on the spectrum who don't feel physical pain. You can, you know, this is, this is why it can be so challenging and so dangerous in some ways, um, because if you're not feeling physical pain, of course, your hands are on the stove or your hands are doing something that, you know, are painful to them. It's the same thing in regard to, to the physical body. So again, our opportunity here is to invite them more fully into the physical body. And there are all kinds of multi-dimensional layers and experiences that can support that integration into the, into the physical body. But as a general stance, um, what we want to notice first is how, how much, how far into the body are they actually connected? So, and we'll know that by, you know, if, if all of the energy is up and out, the way the child moves, the way the head moves, the way the hands move, if all of that's up here, you know that they're probably up and out or not fully integrated into the body below, let's say that heart space. Most of these kids are deeply uh, interconnected dimensionally through the heart, but a lot of times that's as far in as they come. So let's notice well, what, how are the behaviors? Also notice like for some kids who are up on their toes a lot, they're also the ones that are reaching up. It's almost like their, their bodies are reaching up to match the energetic uh, template or the light body. So let's pay attention first to where does it feel or where are you sensing that that child is primarily connected or not connected in the body? And then we wanna do really, really simple things. We want to say if it's in the heart that you notice that they're connected to. We want to create opportunities for them to feel the body below the heart, right? So whether that's you're putting your hand on the small of their back or on their, on their stomach and inviting that energy down a little bit lower, that energy will naturally go where there is a loving kind support for it so it's it's a it's not a force and it's not a push but it's an invitation to kind of meet you right behind your hands so to speak and as we do that more and more then all of a sudden there's more and more bodily awareness let's say um, in the meantime those strong encouragements are needed right? They're, they're actually required. But, but instead of it feeling like a force, like I have to force him to put on the jacket, put on the, you want to shift that a little bit and 
and acknowledge that you're kind of demonstrating the ways of this physical world and what is required in this physical world. And he's demonstrating um, the, let's say the, the spiritual world or the higher dimensional worlds. And so, so when we kind of think of this more as an invitation, I think you'll be really surprised that there's not as much push against it. So it's like, oh, I'm, I'm wearing my coat because this is what we do when winter's happening here, right? This is, this is my invitation to you to actually notice that this is helpful to your body here, right? And as you kind of see it more as an invitation instead of a push, you'll notice that there'll be a little bit more relaxation and a little less push from him <laughs> to actually do it. So the combination of a little bit more in the body and invitation versus force, how pay attention to the energy. Am I forcing him to do it um, or am I inviting him to do it? Those are two very different energetic frequencies and the kids respond very differently to each one. Uh... This one comes again from uh, the grandmother who posted about Michael Jr. Mm -hmm. Right after, right after eating, eating appears very. Oh, Michael Jr. Right after eating appears very uncomfortable, and tries to stand on head. Mm -hmm. uh, is this digestive issues? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, again, when we're not fully present in our bodies then some of the systems of our bodies are left to um, left on their own, right? So it's like if nobody's present in a house for a while, now that house has cobwebs and all kinds of things going on, there's all kinds of little critters running around, right? So, so the same goes for if we're not, if that light body, if that essence is that, if that um, expression of being is not able to be fully integrated into the physical body, then, then he's not there, so to speak, to support the digestion, right? So one of the things that is, he in particular is saying is, you know, lighter foods in his case are better for him than heavier foods. Um, and a lot of times we wanna say, yeah, they need to get their protein. Yeah, they need to get this. Yeah, they need to get that. But let's again, pay attention to, to what's happening. So he's eating, he's not fully there to digest the food, let's say, and, and as soon as he's done eating, he's tipping himself upside down, right? So again, it's like, it's almost like if he could digest from the crown or if he could digest from the third eye <laughs> or the throat, right? He would, he, that he's there, that's where he is. So it's almost like he's, he's <laughs> that's why I smiled when I first saw him do this. It's like, it's like he's, he's flipping the energetic fields, so to speak. Um, to see if some of those lower energies can receive some of the higher frequency where he is present so that he can digest. Um, that said, there are, mm -hmm. hold on a second, I just want to see, he's going off on a different tangent and I just want to follow his lead here. Okay, so I get, this goes back to the communication question that you asked earlier. They're both interrelated. There's also something that he's saying that is taking place like in the dynamics of the energy of the household where um, without being too specific here or too personal here, what I'll say is um, as mom and dad are trying to digest um, certain experiences. Sometimes it's just digesting having a, a child who is functioning differently than other children are functioning. 
but what he's what he is saying is there's some um, energy of emotional digestion, trying to uh, digest something emotionally. And as mom and dad really start talking to someone else about that and or each other about that, um, kind of opening up to what is challenging to digest about this situation, um, what's easy, you know, what's flowing pretty fluidly, um, then he begins to, he begins, he's talking a lot about emotional energy and trying to digest emotional energy is the best way I can, um, yeah, say it now without being too personal. <laughs> yeah, so. All right, uh, let's do that. So uh, one question that was asked last week is, can you speak to the new education system that will support the children? Yeah. Um, um, first and foremost, we really have to have conversations with the children about what supports them. We have to assume that they know. Um, we have to these new education systems are going to come directly out of the children. So these conversations have to be had and they also have to include our capacity to deeply understand that these kids function so much differently than we did, than we do. You know, um, even, you know, for for younger parents, even their children are functioning, we're functioning so much differently than they did. So each generation, like, you know, in my generation, the generations before me, me, and then to my children, that whole energy moved much slower, right? There was change and there was alteration in our state of being, let's say, in our capacity, in the, the bigger aspects of who we were, but that change was generally pr pretty tempered, I would say. Now, um, probably I would say by, I would say late 80s, between late 80s and mid uh, 90s, now, all of a sudden, man, it started at quite a clip. So the, the child that we are looking at today functions completely differently than we functioned. They, they process information differently, neurologically. They process psychological information differently. And their biology is... Um, uh, the best way I can say it is morphing energy faster than fast. So whether they're consciously aware of the energetics of that or not, we really have to start asking them what works for them. And we have to give ourselves permission to trust deep within our own being that what they are saying is true. It's true for them. And even when you hear um, children say, well, I need less education and less kind of cognitively based education. It's not just because they just want to get out of, you know, that kind of information, but they do want to get out of that kind of information <laughs> because they function differently. Yeah, they function differently. It's almost at this stage of the game, especially the newer ones coming in, it's almost like a different species. I mean, I know they, you know, head, two arms, two legs, they look basically like us, but they're functioning so differently, so differently. So is there another question about the education system or, or is there a follow up on that? We've got to start there. We don't have the answers is what I'm, I'm trying to say. We, 
We can think we have the answers, but unless there's some conversation with kids in the midst of finding those uh, solutions, then I think we're still missing the mark, honestly. I would say these last couple weeks. So we were talking about the fact that last week's energy and this energy, especially it's, it's gonna get more and more compressed, more uh, intense in some ways between now and the end of the year. I'd like to say that it's gonna lighten up, but that's probably not very likely. But what is a really positive byproduct of that energy really tightening up um, both for our own inner children and for the children that we love and support, there are also a lot of breakthroughs happening in this energy. It's almost like when something comes right back down to the core issue and this energy is compressing, 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 and it gets right down into the core dynamic, um, it's there's something happening now where the energy is breaking through these core patterns. And I'm, I'm watching this manifest in one kid after another right now, whether it's their capacity to more fully anchor and get here, um, simply um, through their energetic fields, or whether it's the, the manifestation of changes in their behavior. Um, I had a, a young woman not too long ago who is in her early 20s and, you know, was just having had all kinds of, let's say, I would say addictions. Um, um, and she was very interested in sugar. She was very interested in that kind of jazzed up kind of feeling. And all of a sudden, just through a little bit of... Um, a shift in the dynamic specifically for her parents around allowing that sweetness of life to come in, allowing that energy of sweetness, a, rem a remembering, a reminder of even though the world is kind of chaotic right now, there are these sweet and beautiful moments. There are these sweet and beautiful experiences just just giving a little bit of information like this, this young woman decided, this was over a month ago now actually, um, that she simply would have sugar once a week, right? So I don't know about you guys, but for me to say, okay, I'm gonna stop this and do that now, that's a big deal. It's a big deal for any adult, let alone a, an individual who's been kind of addicted to that experience. So when I talked to her parents um, just a week or so ago, they were just floored that she had just made this shift all on her own, right? And so this is a really, really exciting time because these kinds of things are really possible and a little bit of energy kind of directed in just the right way and sometimes in much more simple ways than we might anticipate are unwinding core patterns that, yeah, have been around for a really long time. So um, anyway, let's, as we kind of move into, you know, these next few weeks and this moving, you know, into the holiday season and in through the rest of the year when this compression is happening, let's also imagine that that energy of that compression is, is pushing, 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 fine tuning, moving into the core and breaking it apart moment by moment. As that's our attention point and intention, that's what happens, right? That's what happens. So um, anyway, I hope that's helpful for everybody for tonight. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you next time. So lots of love, everybody. Thanks for being here. Bye.